Hello everyone and welcome to my DIY tape mural tutorial. In this video I will show you how I painted this directly onto my wall. Here's what you'll need to get started. Glitter in the color of your choice, disposable gloves, a palette and a mixing bowl, an eraser, Mod Podge or any glue that dries clear, acrylic paint in the color of your choice, sponge, masking tape, a pencil, a level, and also, not pictured here, a stencil in the pattern of your choice. Now before you get started, make sure you take the time to clear out your work area, and after taking a level and a pencil, we're going to take our time finding a straight line. I grabbed some masking tape and I put it directly on it and then just kind of guessed where I would want the rest of the triangle to go. Now remember, this is a DIY project, so you don't have to be absolutely perfect. This isn't machine made, so any type of little accidents, I call them happy artistic accidents and I always find they give character to any type of art and it just shows the hard work you put into it. Grabbing some Mod Podge, this is a very important step. We're going to just dab it into any area that paint is going to go into. After the Mod Podge dries, it will create a seal that will not allow any paint to seep underneath your masking tape and that's going to give us those beautiful crisp straight lines. Grabbing your disposable glove and your acrylic paint, this is just regular paint, I started dabbing it into the places where I wanted the paint to be. Um, as with almost any other type of artistic venture, it's better to start off thinner and then move on to thicker. So I'm, here I'm just filling in the areas. After I took off my glove, you can see that there's absolutely no paint left under my fingers. And if you're just looking for some geometric shape, you are more than welcome to stop here. And that's why I'm removing that masking tape. Look how satisfying that is and so, so straight. Razor sharp edges. If you want to take it a step further, then we're going to make our glitter grout. So grabbing some glitter, we put it into the bowl and then I added Mod Podge to it. I started mixing and we're looking for a similar texture to this. It should be pretty thick. The thicker the better, I would say. Here's that stencil I forgot to show you guys at first. So after I placed it, I just started fully applying the glitter grout into those places. Uh, it was a bit of a messy process. I had used that stencil repeatedly before and I think I didn't clean it very well. So I had a lot of um, glitter grout seep through underneath. Um, but that was totally okay with me. I love it when it looks a little bit uneven, but there were parts that were a little bit too close together So I just took a pencil and I started scraping away some of the lines just to make it a little bit cleaner Here I changed my utensil. I used a Plastic palette knife and uh, I did not like that at all as you can see I went right back to the painting painting brush You should really just use whatever material and whatever utensil feels best for you so I like to use at least start in the center of the piece for the first day because you do need to wait for it to be fully dried before you can add the next part of the stencil so I like to be in the center so I can go on both sides the next day now since the first part the first top triangle is actually finished now I'm gonna remove that masking tape it is so much easier to remove this while the grout is still drying rather than waiting for it to be fully dry so I just took care of that today now the next day everything was fully dried and uh, as you can see I'm here just continuing my stencil pattern and I don't know if you noticed but I said adieu to any type of utensils and I just went straight in with my finger. Uh, I was okay with doing that for this because of the Mod Podge. After that dries you can just peel it right off of your fingers and no mess is left behind. And um, truly the finger worked the best. I had the most control over it. Um, I quite enjoy finger painting in general, so this was just so much more natural for me. So as you can see, I just kept going, filling in the stencil, trying to match the stencil pattern as well as I could. I made a couple of mistakes and no worries, it's not a big deal, it's not a perfect pattern. For me, it just truly shows you that I didn't purchase this somewhere from a store and that I just took my time painting it myself. I'm adding the last little touch here, that's the end of the stencil. So taking a ruler and an X-Acto knife, I'm just cutting the parts that were fully dried from yesterday. And you can see here, even after cutting, it was still so hard to remove that masking tape. So just take your time with this. It will be a little rough, but after you will be left with these beautiful sharp edges and a perfect stenciled tape mural. And here's the finished result. 
You do have full creative freedom with this, so you can just keep it into paint or put patterns in it or change it up, make almost any shape you would want. You just keep those little tricks in mind. Here I added some fairy lights to my triangle just to zhuzh it up a little bit. Uh, I love the way it looks like this. I think it's a little bit more fancy and it just stands out in my room a little bit more. And you can see on the left here, just a preview of my statement piece mural that I did in my room. So I worked really hard on that. It took me about a month, I will say, of just constant work. But in the end, I love the way it looks. I hope this video was helpful for you and I hope you have fun in your artistic adventures. Thank you so much for watching.